Hi everyone, this is Hey Stella with Mihaela. I am an acting coach. I am a little. Hello everyone, this is Hey Stella podcast with Mihaela. I am a lifetime member of the Actor Studio and an international acting coach. What am I an expert at when I say I am an acting coach? I would say I'm an expert. I'm an expert in working with actors. I'm an expert in working with directors, screenwriters, entertainers, public speakers, and every other profession, doctors, nurses, mechanics, teachers, politicians, any human being who is interested in discovering and learning how to become detective in finding the most specific and the most subtle clues into our humanity, into our life, and how to try to understand that, to have more tools available at our disposal and try to live it the best way possible. I'm an expert in human behavior as acting well-defined by the actors, director, Ilya Kazan, is psychology transformed into behavior. So I would say that I'm an expert without a medical degree that needs to be understood because that requires a completely different training. Today, I have decided to wear this new sweater which I bought secondhand. And the reason why I saw it in the millions of objects that they have on the internet is because this right here, this yellow army-like decorative premium, we used to call it in Romania, reminds me a lot of when I was a child, when I was going to school in the village where I come from in Transylvania. Every year, depending on the grades that you would receive, there would be a huge celebration. This is during the communist regime, which there were festivities and people would gather, the families of the students would come and you would receive something like this to reveal the achievement that you have had for that particular year as a student. And I think there were, if I'm not mistaken, there were different colors there were different colors that represented different levels of achievement. So when I saw this on the internet, it brought back memories, the significance of an object. This is the object, the significance of the object. When you look into something and one of your senses is being triggered, stimulated, because it takes you back to the memory of something that might have happened in your life. And this is what this sweater did for me. It took me back to my childhood because of these decorative, beautiful yellow markings on it. And it also kind of reminds me of like the regime, the communism, it's all mixed. It's great memories and it's bad memories because you can just divide your mind to have one or the other. It's usually the images that come in one's head because of the way that the brain works. They are a lot of them and they're confusing each other. They're different colors. And then you have to try to separate them and you have to try to put them in different compartments in order for you to then be able to subtract to take out the ones that you need to use when portraying a character. And there has to be some kind of an emotional result that the character is going through. And you might want to go to the specific object, which is this, put it on. Or if I don't have time to put it on because I'm playing a character and I already have a different costume that they want me to wear for the character, then I might have this person or significant object with me. And I will just minutes before they call action during my preparation, I can actually take it and feel it, close my eyes for a second and just allow it 
to take me back to those moments that I explained of my childhood when I was trying to make everybody proud and receive this achievement at the end of the school year. <laughs> I don't even know how to go about this because I have watched a show on Netflix. Binge watching, as I'm sure a lot of you have also during this pandemic. A lot of shows, a lot of platforms that we have the opportunity to choose from. There's no lack of them at all. And I had been seeing for the last couple of days or maybe even weeks, I'm not sure when it came on, on Netflix. There's a show that's called Don't F With Cats. So the title doesn't really explain what the show is about. So I have passed it so many times. I haven't really gone to the description part of it to see what it's about, but because the title was not really talking to me for various reasons. It's not that I don't like cats or I don't like animals because I do, but I just assume that it has something to do with everything that then later when I saw it was completely wrong of me to assume. I think the reason why last night I stopped to it to watch is because I was watching CNN for a brief moment and they were introducing for the first time a clip of the series that the CNN films are going to be doing in 2022, which is story presented a new way, a story that has never been told of Marilyn Monroe. When they were showing that advertisement for the series that's going to be happening on CNN in 2022, a picture popped up and it was a picture of Marilyn Monroe, a very known picture where she's sitting in the middle of a group of people with a cigarette in her hand. And she's very much paying attention to what's happening in front of her in the direction where she's looking. And that same picture is one of the pictures that at the actor studio, they have it placed in the lobby of the actor studio. And it popped up. I think again, the stimulus, the stimulation to my brain and what made me pay more attention to that clip was when that particular picture showed up on the screen because I recognized it. My mind stopped, the wires in my brain started to make connections and I thought that is the exact picture that I love. And every time I invite a guest to come to the sessions of the actor studio, where I am a member, as you know, I always show them that beautiful picture because I don't think that a lot of people know that Marilyn Monroe was working with the acting guru, the method guru, Lee Strasberg. They had a very, very good relationship. She was spending a lot of time with him at his home. They had a personal relationship, father, daughter, kind of, some people say, but he went beyond just the acting coach, guru, and her as the actress. And as soon as I saw the picture presented in this clip by CNN, I said to myself, I am sure that they are going to tell a different kind of story, a new story that the public might not know about Marilyn Monroe beyond what the public and the general audience tend to think of her. As we all know much more about the public persona and the same stories that were revealed over the years about her personal involvement with the President Kennedy, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think that a lot of people know about her commitment to the work of the actor and the association with the actor studio and Lee Strasberg himself, and that she was an artist. 
who cared about the work. She wasn't a celebrity. She wasn't just a star. She was a true artist who was very much about the craft and she participated and took to those sessions with Lee Strasberg. I am so blown away when I see something that is associated with what the podcast is and with my passion for the craft of acting, for the art of experiencing, as it became known, as I say many times at the actor studio, because it's not about acting. It's, it's actually not acting, being, experiencing, feeling, going there, living on stage or on set. It's about living in the circumstances that are given to you. It's about creating in the moment, involving all of your senses to participate in the living of the moment, be it fictional or real, of the character that you are portraying. So that really was very interesting to me, seeing that people are starting to realize that the art of experience is being, being revealed on CNN, for example, which at first you wouldn't think that they would have anything to do with acting, but it's becoming more known of the power that he has to all of those people that I had mentioned in the beginning when I said I'm an expert in working with people of different professions, in understanding their humanness, understanding their subtle behaviors, and by doing so, learning how to navigate and how to live our life to the full of our potential, to the fullest of our capacity, the best way that we can figure it out, having at our disposal the tools that the acting craft provides. And then having seen that, I went to look who is the production company associated with this series. I found the production company and then I went to look them up. They were the ones who also produced the show that I had been passing over because of the title Don't F with Cat. Connection was made knowing that they are at the core of producing this new series with Marilyn Monroe. So then I went back, I stopped on it, I played it. And, oh my God, I do want to recommend to people to see it. But I have to warn you, it is one of the most disturbing. It is one of the most horrendous documentary I have seen in my entire life. Warning, 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 if you decide to see it. But once you start, you cannot stop, even though it is so grotesque and it shows humanity and our ability to be so horrific and the why of not stopping watching is because somewhere deep inside we know that just because we are not acting on our grotesque humanness, our ugliest part of our humanity that we all have inside of us, just because we're not acting on those instincts that in this particular documentary, this one person does act on it, does not make us be all good. It reminds us that we have that not active, thank God, due to our social, emotional education and our regard to respect our humanity and the humanity of others. But there are those people out there who 
are not able to stop themselves from allowing that instinct to be then put into action in a way devastating to other people. This particular documentary is about an actor. Another thing that made me kind of stop in my tracks and go, wow, 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 wow. Actor person from Canada, Toronto, wanting to become a famous actor. He's even shown in some scenes where he's actually auditioning for some sorts of reality shows and other for something else. So you see this normal human being in the beginning, this kid, Luca is his first name. He seems to be a normal human being, very handsome kid, to then find out that the same person who at first glance seems like a normal human being is discovered by, and now this is where everything is blowing my mind of the capacity and where the turns of this documentary go. The internet nowadays is filled with sleuths they are called they are so-called internet detectives without any kind of a diploma without any kind of official training to be detectives but in this film what I saw what I found out is that they have so much more knowledge in the way that they go about discovering and finding specifics and subtleties about this particular kid who was not known in the beginning of the show, but due to those internet detectives and their hard work over so many months, their discussion, oh, did you see that the pictures that he posted in this particular Facebook thing is not a real picture, but it's a head that he is placing on different bodies of different people in different situations to make himself look like he is a traveler. He's living the life. He's living the celebrity. People love him. So he created all these websites for himself as if the fans were creating them to make himself feel he is the famous actor that he's never become. And unless you are specific in the way that you are following the clues on the internet and commit to that, following locations, following the very little objects, going back to the significance of objects in the room because of the videos that he posted, those detectives on the internet were able to look in the room and they were able to say, oh my God, do you see that poster? That poster back there is from the movie Basic Instinct. One of the alias names that he uses is the character of Basic Instinct, Sharon Stone. Or the poster in the background of his videos is the poster of Casablanca and the last uh, line in Casablanca between the two characters is, we'll always have Paris. So Paris, they, the detectives knew that he will probably have to go to Paris for his next location in order to hide from the police because now he's a wanted killer. So he starts from an actor going in front of people to audition for different things. Two years go by, him posting videos of doing horrible things to cats. Those videos I couldn't even watch. I had to actually put my hand over my face because I could not watch it. I didn't wanna have to be left with that impression. But he is putting these videos out there beginning with hurting these um, little tiny, beautiful creatures, cats. You can't even watch. And these detectives, sleuths on the internet are so 
disgusted and are so upset with what he's doing, knowing that if he did it once, he's going to go and do it again. And then maybe he's going to go move from the cat and the animals to maybe killing people. So they were so into discovering who this person is and reporting it to the real police so the police can take care of him before anything tragic and more drastic can happen. So they're doing their best especially there's two main characters who are the connecting link. I think they were the ones that committed to this search, to this detective work. And they are so much more trained in finding this person than the real police. But unfortunately, when they were in the middle of finding and discovering that this person could be doing something that's going to be horrible, moving away from the animals, moving away from the cats and maybe getting to a person and killing a person. And they had those concerns and they were trying to get in touch with the Toronto police and then the Montreal police. This happens again. He moves locations. He was very slippery because he was trying to not be found and when those detectives are actually realizing the danger of this and are trying to get in touch and I, they do send their concerns to the police, the police doesn't answer because I'm sure the police people don't think that these online detectives would probably know better than they did. Or I, I don't know why, but that's that was like so, so sad because if they would have taken the messages, they would have been able to maybe save someone's life because what happens in the end is... They don't listen to the internet detectives. And then Luca, the main character, guy, actor, wannabe famous, ends up killing a Chinese kid in his apartment and posts that video on the internet and then flies to, escapes to Europe and cuts his body before not only does he kill him on a video but then he cuts his legs and head off of his torso and sends parts of it to some politicians in Canada in boxes and it becomes one of the most horrific and sad crimes he's still able to manipulate and to play his games and get away to Berlin where he is recognized while in an internet cafe by the owner. The owner calls the police and the police finally grab him, bring him back to Canada and is found guilty in a court, in a trial and spends the rest of his life in jail. If only the whole film could be rewinded to where the real police would have listened to the online police and their concerns, this might have been prevented. So I was thinking about those two online detectives from this film. Watching them, I had this realization that they are following the clues of trying to figure this person out in order to understand him and what he's about to do next so they can prevent him from doing it is very similar to what we do when we analyze a character as actors when we analyze behavior as actors only those characters happen to be fictional most of them but then we also have to play real characters if there's ever a movie made about this kid i'm not saying there should be there were movies that were made about other killers if this kid would not have been stopped after the first killing due to the help of those online detectives that's how they were able to find him as the police finally realizes that they have to ask the help of the online detectives and that's how they were able to catch him in berlin But if they would not have been so consistent and so focused in those 
specific findings of the poster of Casablanca, then there's the basic instinct film that he takes a quote from the main character. He was so obsessed with wanting to be a celebrity and he grew up on movies wanting to be an actor and instead of understanding the tools and having an environment that was going to lead him into a life that was going to be positive he took the other path and I'm sure it has to do with the way that he was raised. I'm sure that it has to do with his mom that was also interviewed, who is in complete denial that her child could be doing this. More so, she's believing in what his invention was, that there's a man by the name of Manny who's made him do all these things and he had no power to be able to stop it and then they find out that Manny is another character from the same basic instinct film so he was using all these different quotes different characters different locations by putting the clues in those videos that only those internet detectives were able to see them and the significance of them. The real police has still yet to be trained in this kind of analysis when searching for human behavior. And having seen that from the perspective of an acting coach, who's digging into the script with the actors I work with, going between the lines and finding the story of the character before the play begins or the movie begins and finding what's happening between the pages when we don't have anything written is such a reminder of what these detectives online are doing. Their work is of value to the actual policemen who have yet to be trained in knowing how to do their work in the same way or learn the tools that they don't yet seem to have. It's a remarkable film to watch. It is, again, something that taps into the ugliness of our human as that we all have somewhere, somewhere, somewhere deep down, we are all capable of doing really bad, bad things. They might not be to the extreme of these people, thank God, but we can do bad to ourselves and to others in a way that sometimes maybe we don't even realize it. Watching that made me think and appreciate kindness. Very, very powerful and very riveting when production companies are not afraid to come up and to represent the part of ourselves as humans that is not to be celebrated but it needs to be portrayed and it needs to be shared and it needs to be shown because that way maybe we will be able to understand that and learn how to not go there. More so learn how to be the opposite of all that ugliness and be kind and be generous and be of service and helpful. And if I were to try to make a point, and conclude this episode, what would that be? I would say the understanding of actors' work to be used in diverse professions, specifically in this film by the internet detectives in order to catch a killer and stop him from becoming 
a serial killer is powerful. Wow. Thank you. And thank you for allowing me to share my significant sweater. Salute. That's how we used to do it when we were pioneers of the communist regime. We didn't know any better at that time and I was young, so I couldn't really understand what situation we were in and how bad it was because we had nothing to compare it to. So those mixed motions of my childhood, like I said in the beginning of the episode, will always remain as mixed as I'm sure they are for all of us. Salute. Thank you.